My major is art education. My major is graphic design. But it just wasn't working out, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to embrace this. And one of the reasons why I picked Bluffton as a first, in the first place was because I knew it had an art and writing major, and I was like, if I ever switched, I can do that. And I did switch. I've always enjoyed art. I've always had an interest in art and it's always been a passion of mine ever since I was really little and um, I just I really enjoy children and young adults and I enjoy helping them with their artwork and I think that it's definitely that's something that is very important that we need to have in schools um, so I just always have had a passion of helping people with their artwork and so our education was just the natural choice for me and it just it felt right. Honestly going into college I was still unsure about what I wanted to do and I thought well I'd like graphic design and I wasn't sure how much I'd like it but I signed up for it and I signed up for all the classes but when I got to college and I met with my advisor like we were supposed to check over our classes and make sure everything was okay it took like 10 seconds and I was there for an hour talking about typography and embossing. So I was sold. And then I had typography and design classes, and I've just been there since. My best experience with my art journey, I would have to say, is just an ongoing process of learning and growing, because you can always get better at something. Your art is always changing and evolving. And I could say that the past four years at Bluffton, I've definitely um, experienced a change in my artwork and I've definitely grown. And so just overall, just seeing the progression of my artwork is just kind of um, inspiring and, and uh, yeah, I like looking back and seeing how I've grown. One of my best experiences in my journey of doing graphic design was I entered a contest called Hometown Love in Wichita, Kansas. And I mean, that, that was all that we were given. Hometown Love, make a poster. So I made a poster and it has a lot of clouds and a lot of words in the clouds. It has a really tiny uh, cityscape of Belmond, which like the tallest building besides our grain elevator is the hospital, and it's like three stories tall. Spent a lot of time on it, I sent it off, and I actually won that. Um, there's been multiple good experiences during my time here at Bluffton. Um, there's no one single experience that I would say, um, like, would umbrella all, all the good things I've learned. <laughs> um, like in ceramics, I've learned I learned how to like be patient, and I'd never like touched a wheel before or anything. And the first three weeks, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but then, like you do, you find your own like pace and groove to it, and then you're able to do it. And I'd never touched anything in like the digital realms of art either. Um, but now I I really like doing Photoshop and like the collage with that. Um, I'm not a professional or anything, but. Um, I, that's another skill I've learned, and light painting's new to me too. Um, but I, it's a, most of my work up on the walls is light painting, so um, that that's another thing I've learned that I really got to enjoy um, in, during my time here at Bluffton because the equipment was given to me to try it out. My favorite piece in my art show is it's called the Incursion. And the only reason that I say that it's my, my favorite is because it personally, for me, is a very successful piece and it goes along with um, some personal things and feelings that I was going through and I just felt like I really depicted them perfectly and it was a little bit outside of my comfort zone because I'm used to doing a lot of realism and it's a little bit more surreal. but. Uh, I think that it's successful and so I was just kind of proud of myself for being able to do something outside of my comfort zone and being successful at it. It may not be the best work, but it's my favorite. A piece that I really like in the show is my untitled three-dimensional piece, which draws on Metatron's cube and 20-sided dice in role-playing games 
and it's just a very strange piece and I enjoy it. I, um, I like Nico, the little creature behind the, I, that was, I like him because I like assigned him a, a personality, so I don't know, there's things I like about each piece, really. Currently, for my departmental honors project, I am working on, I'm writing and illustrating a picture book about a girl in elementary school with depression, so to kind of um, serve as um, a source for which children can understand, like if they are going through depression, and they can understand their feelings and thoughts and how it's not their fault and stuff like that. Um, I'm also working on a ceramic sculpture with some hands. I'm working on um, random drawings and paintings. Usually, it doesn't. Usually, some it's hard for me to plan them. It just kind of comes. The inspiration comes, and then you just have to act on it and just go with it. So, I'll be like doing something late at night, and then I'm like, ah, I've gotta get this out, and then I just draw something and. So, but those are the concrete project that, projects that I'm working on. Awesome. Well, that's all I have. Okay. Cool. Thank you. You're very welcome. The series that I'm working on right now in one of my classes, it's kind of evolved that I can carry on the same theme throughout all my pieces. I'm working on a experience conveying a reality versus unreality. It's based off of a book called Sylvie and Bruno by Lewis Carroll, and this guy falls asleep and he dreams, and so the book has two storylines, the reality and the unreality. So I've been working a lot with using color versus black and white, or like really rainbow marble paint pour versus like book text. and. I've really enjoyed using Victorian flower language to convey further meaning. Um, right now I am working on an independent project upstairs though, um, on a comic book. Um, the concept my cousin Duke and I came up with, um, like when we were young, like late middle school, but I've gotten like to really know the characters I think, and I was like, you know what, no, this could be good, and so I had a couple people read the manuscript for me um, in its entirety and now I'm just working on the first issue and it's it's been a lot of work but I, I enjoy it. I've got some books out from the library about how to like make comic books and like concepts behind it like Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud and he also has another one called Making Comics and um, just the realm of sequential arts really interesting kind of like how the readers an accomplice with the story. Like if you see a guy raise an ax in one panel and then the next panel like you just see a scream, like you yourself filled in what happened within the gutter. Um, but the writer didn't tell you that he actually died, but you know he did. So it's like you're participating in the story. So it's actually like more, there's more to it than just, I think the pictures and the superheroes and stuff. Um, there's actually some real reader participation and action involved with it.